Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll talk about Advanced Expert Management app and how it interacts with the sales orders inside of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain. So first, let's go through the configuration steps. If we look up here, first we needed to go and deploy this expert management application in our Power Platform. Then we had to go and register an application, create a secret. Uh, from that point on, we have to go and create that app user. And then we would go to D365 FNO and configure the product compliance or advanced expert management configurations. Once the app has been deployed, here's our expert management app. Here we can create our jurisdictions. So jurisdictions is a collection of codes, categories, restrictions, exceptions, and licenses that are applicable to a specific region. So let's just go and, for example, create a new jurisdiction. Click on new. Let's say it will be ITAR. Save and close. Now we have created this new jurisdiction. Now if we open Dynamics and navigate to Product Information Management, Product Compliance, Country of Origin, Advanced Export Management Configuration, click on jurisdictions in use in this company and if we click on new we'd be able to select our company let's say USMF and then we'd be able to go and pull from the list of those jurisdictions you saw that I created ITAR just a couple of seconds ago but due to dual right the synchronization happens quite quickly so I can select that one and click OK so that means that for the US entity USMF there are two expert management jurisdictions that are applicable EAR and ITAR you can go and activate that. Now if we go to the general here's how we connect that expert management app to our Dynamics 365 environment right so that's where I had to enter my secret application ID that I have created in that configuration step right once everything went smoothly you would see the status should be all three checkboxes should be checked. Now let's go back to our expert management application and let's start configuring a specific jurisdiction. In this case, I will continue configuring that EAR, which is Expert Administration Regulations. Click on that. That's where you see there are multiple sections. Here we define our codes. So codes are assigned to release products in FNO and we will do that as well, right? So we have to define the code in the context of a specific jurisdiction. And then there are categories as well, right? So we can define specific rules that are applicable to specific categories. Now, if we scroll down here, we have restriction and then exceptions section. So I have created a single restriction. Let's just click on that. This restriction is specific for the country of Benin. So let's just go through the few options. So the naming and the user message, this is what we will see on our sales order when we run that expert check on the sales order or sales quotation inside of Dynamics 365. Now, when we try to post certain documents to sales order quotes, so for example, sales order confirmation, picking list, packing slip, invoice, etc., the system gives us three options. Is it just an informational message, basically a blue bar on the top of the screen? Is it a warning, a yellow bar on the top of the screen? Or is it a hard stop, red bar, we would not be able to post that document. So in this case, I decided to pick a warning. So it will allow us to proceed, but will give us that yellow bar on the top. Now we have two choices on the rule type. So this rule is defining the restriction. So basically, if the conditions are met, that means this type of products is not authorized to be sold. But you can also do the exception. And I think I will talk about exceptions in my next video on this topic. Now, uh, this is a more advanced functionality where you can define certain uh, rules that are basically uh, power effects formulas. I did not do that. And in this case, what I'm saying is if the sales order or sales quotation ships to country of Benin, then we would prevent that sale. And now there is a purpose. So the purpose is when exactly should that restriction be triggered? In this case, you see that I selected a sale, which means a sales order confirmation posting, invoice and the packing slip posting. I excluded picking list, I excluded general, canceled and quotation. And you will see when I run that expert check on my sales order, you will see that in certain cases the restriction will be applicable and in certain cases it will not. Then you have a choice of whether to apply this restriction to all codes or only specific code. And in here I define a specific code 3A994. 
So if the release product is assigned to that code, the sale should be restricted if the destination country is Benin. All right, so let's go back. So this is a restriction. And then there are no exceptions in these jurisdictions currently. And then I decided to create a license. So the license just basically keeps track of a number of units that were sold. So let's just click on this license right here. I just tapped in a random number. The validity is uh, in 2025. And then underneath here, I have a line that defines that this specific license is applicable to ECCN code 7A994. And the number of units that we keep track of is 200. If you click on the line, you see that I can define a restriction either on number of units, in this case, it's 200, or on the on the value, in this case, it's blank. That's an overview of the jurisdiction. Now let's go back to Dynamics 365 and let's take a look at the item setup, release products. And for this demo, I have created a new product that is NAV8, let me just search for it. And because the configuration is enabled in this legal entity, you see that under foreign trade, we see additional grid here that would allow us to define a jurisdiction, EAR, and also select one of those ECCN codes. So in this case, I have selected that 7A994 for which the restriction is applicable. Third country region content percentage, I can define it here, but I did not see any, any effect of it in my testing. All right, so that's how we go and associate a release product to ECCN code. Now let's just go and create a new sales order for the customer that is Benin customer. Here's the delivery address. It is in Porto Novo. Click on OK. Now I'll show you how we run the export check on the item that does not belong to that code. So I'm going to add a regular item 1000. And then on the cell tab under actions, you see there is this check export management. I'm going to click on that. The system will execute the check. And right now saying there are no errors, no warning and no info messages for this line. And you see here on the purpose, I can select, for example, what about if I post an invoice? Well, no issues here as well. What about if I post the packing slip? Same idea. No license issues, no errors, no warnings, no informational messages. Now I'll go back here and I'll add the second line for my NAV8 item. And let's say the quantity here is 10. Now I'm going to do the same check again. Now you see that for the second line for that NAV8 item, here's this EAR78994 restriction, been in missile technology restriction. And here's that user message that we have defined for a restriction inside of the expert management app. But you notice if I, for example, change it to the picking, well, there are no issues here. There are no warnings. That is because our restriction purpose excludes the picking list. Same thing goes, for example, for the quotation, right? No warnings here. But if, for example, I select the purpose of invoice, then I see my warning message right here. So these checks are just checks, right? We're not posting any documents. This is just for information purposes. Now I'll go back here and I will go and I will attach a license to that sales order. It cannot be defaulted based on my knowledge. So we can attach a license in multiple places. First, I'll go to the sales order header, scroll down into expert management license. I will select my EAR jurisdiction. And then under license number, I see that random license that it will expire December 31st. So you can do it this way. But also, if you go back to lines, we can attach licenses to specific sales or lines. So here's my second line right here. I will click on expert management license and do exact same thing. Select my jurisdiction and select my license number. Now what I'll do is I will post a sales order confirmation. So we'll go and either just confirm a sales order. I'm going to do that. And now we'll see how the system will behave, right? Remember the quantity here is 10, right? So the first is that yellow warning message. We already saw that when we did the check, right? Again, nothing new here. It's the same message that we see. It did not prevent us from posting confirmation because that is a soft stop warning. Also, if we go back to our expert management application and open that license again, click on the lines. You see that right now, current quantity consumed is 130 and the quantity available is 200. But there is this little calculator button right here and I will click on calculate. And you see that the quantity has increased to 140. That is because of that 10 units that we just confirmed on that sales order. And the same thing goes for the value. Right now it's 145, 200. 
click on calculate and it changes to 157. So unfortunately that's a manual check but that's just how the system functions currently. Here's my sales order number that ends with 1114 and we see the line number two, we see the quantity and we see a total of $12,000. Uh, what I notice here is you can go and edit, right? You can select that line, you can edit quantity, etc. Interesting that you can do that. Another thing that I notice is if I go and I delete that sales order or delete that sales order line, these counters are not automatically updated, right? So it's once it's committed and once it's recorded here, it's not going to go away unless you manually go and either correct the quantity or you delete that line altogether, right? So just one thing to keep in mind. So now let's go back here and for example right now we have the quantity that is available so we have 140 but we have 200 so what about if we push it over right will the system stop us so we'll go back to my sales order and I'll change it from 10 to let's say 200 and then do the confirmation again because the system is configured as the warning I will not see the stop it's just going to show that the quantity is more than to what we have committed so let's just go back here click on the calculation again calculate we see that the quantity consumed is already at 330 even though only 200 are available but because the restriction is just a warning that is why system allows us to proceed and the final thing that I wanted to show you here is we have confirmed that sales order twice and the system keeps history of it right of course there is a sales order confirmation journal we all know about that but also it keeps track of the statuses from the expert compliance perspective we're going to go back to the sales order header scroll down and you see right here we have this two confirmations that were posted by me right now and is allowed yes twice yes and if we click on the results it's just going to bring up that summary right here saying it's only the warning about this uh, compliance and it shows us the license number it shows us the restriction name etc right so let's just go back here let's just summarize i think it's an interesting beginning i think that app can be extended if we look at the documentation on microsoft learn we see that there is ability to extend expert control on the sales orders, uh, extend uh, specific functionality for the licenses. So there are ways to improve that functionality. As you remember that you can use the PowerFX formulas to define specific restrictions, a bit more advanced. So there are kind of opportunities to build on top of that standard functionality. So overall, I think it can be quite useful considering the climate in the world where we need to make sure that our sales and quotations are compliant with any government regulations. That is all I wanted to show to you today. I hope you found this video useful. Until the next time, take care.